UFC 296 is this week. I'm going to give you a prediction and breakdown of all 14 fights on this card, starting with the early prelim matchup of Randy Brown versus Muslim Salikov. I'm going to go with Randy Brown. Muslim Salikov is definitely getting up there in age. Just lost to Nicholas Dalby, which at this point probably isn't that bad of a loss. I think Nicholas Dalby is a pretty solid fighter now. At least he just beat, um, what's his name? Uh, Bonfim, Gabriel Bonfim, who I was pretty high on. So I was actually super surprised by that, but Nicholas Dalby, pretty solid fighter and not a guy to mess around with at all. So we kind of have an idea where Muslim Salikov kind of is because I feel like I'll get a pick right with him and, and then he'll look super impressive one day and then super unimpressive the next. I won't say necessarily unimpressive, but like I think, did I choose Fialio to beat Muslim Salikov? I think I might have, and he Fialio lost to him, which kind of sucks. The, the fall of Fialio was uh, pretty sad in general, but I think Randy Brown, with his reach, with his length, I think Muslim Salikov normally does fight with quite a bit of length. He, more recently, I'd say, he's kind of gone with like a more standard style with like jab and regular stuff, but he normally likes to go with a lot of kicks. With Randy Brown with the 78 inches of reach, 8 inch reach advantage in this matchup, I think Randy Brown is decent enough and good enough to be able to beat Muslim Salikov on the feet, completely outpoint him on the feet as well. He just beat Wellington Terman, who I think is a solid fighter. I know he didn't look too great in his last fight, but he does train with Alex Pereira. He kind of developed the style of him a little bit. So I think Randy Brown will look good against Muslim Salikov. Randy Brown is the guy that's kind of just right outside the top 15 of that welterweight division. I feel kind of the same way about Muslim Salikov, but I think 39 years of age, I don't know what he's going to look like in this match. And I think Randy Brown is 33 years of age and has looked pretty decent recently. I guess what his only loss was to Jack Della Maddalena relatively recently. He won against Francisco Trinaldo by decision, the Chaos Williams by split decision. So I'm going to go with Randy Brown by decision, topology, is agreeing with me here. 82% picked for Randy Brown, 78% by decision. Let's move on. Up the card, we have Shamil Gaziev versus Martin Boudet. I am going to go with Shamil Gaziev. He does have good power in his hands, and he is a pretty good grappler and wrestler. So I'm going to go Gaziev here. I think Martin Boudet is actually solid for an unranked heavyweight. I mean, they're they're a little bit more on the overweight side. So they're going to have like that kind of, I don't even know, assumption about them in the heavyweight division i'll say but martin boudet is solid um he has i think he got his first finish right uh he won by kimura was that his first finish of, the, of his career i know he's super excited about because he really wanted to get a finish in the ufc because yeah look at this contender series knee to the head okay <laughs> one by decision against chris barnett won another split decisions decision and then finally got the finish against josh parisian He's had he has looked decent against unranked heavyweights. However, I think Shamil Gaziev is just going to be able to out wrestle him. If not on the feet, I think he's going to have a little bit more power. I think he has more finishing ability than Martin Boudet, which is why I'm going to go with him in this matchup as well. He will have one and a half inch reach advantage as well in this matchup. Shamil Gaziev looked really good on the contender series against Gregor Velasco. He won that one by Rene Choke, knocked him down, and ended up getting the submission. So I think Shamil Gaziev is going to look really good in this matchup. Maybe he gets the first round finish. I can see him get submitting. Martin Boudet, but we'll kind of see what Martin Boudet looks like on the ground. We haven't really seen it too much. He's normally a bigger guy that kind of just likes to force himself on um, some of these other guys like in the clinch. He used to clinch quite a bit, honestly, and his fights used to be super boring, but his last fight, he got to finish, so I'll give him props there, but I'm going to go with Shamil Gaziev. Tapology's picking Shamil Gaziev as well. 69% picked by Tapology, 63% by KO, 12% by submission, 18% by decision. I am going to go with Shamil Gaziev. Probably actually maybe T I, I do think Martin Boudet does have some decent grappling ability like there's a reason why he hasn't really been taken down and out grappled on the ground maybe Shamil Gaziev can catch him I, well here's the thing with Shamil Gaziev I think he can catch him and then kind of just hop on him and try and go for that submission so I'm actually going to go with Gaziev probably by like a first or second round submission I think he knocks him down uh hits him pretty hard maybe they finish it by tko i don't know i i do think gaziev does finish the fight but i'm not too certain on how he does submission or tko is kind of just up in the air there so i'm gonna go with submission i think he knocks him down and maybe hops on him in like a arm triangle or something but i can also see gaziev tkoing martin boudet up the card we have andre philly versus lucas almeida i am gonna go with andre philly in this matchup lucas almeida is a pretty good fighter on the feet has a lot of power in his hands as well 
However, he does have a really big hole on the ground, and Pat Sabatini kind of showed that in, his, in their last fight. I think I chose Lucas Almeida. I probably shouldn't have because I thought he was just going to be able to catch Pat Sabatini, which you kind of saw against Diego Lopez. I put a lot of money on Diego Lopez, and he won. I, I was actually pretty confident he was going to win just because of how good of a grappler Diego Lopez was. But And, and the fact that Sabatini, I felt, was a little bit chinny. Lucas Almeida was not able to, to land pretty clean on Sabatini, so he was able to get taken down, and he got submitted. But Andre Philly looked really good against Nathaniel Wood in his last way. I don't think he won. I thought Nathaniel won. Nathaniel won. I thought Nathaniel Wood won um, relatively clearly there as a close fight. However, I, I do think Wood won that fight. Um, some people say it was a little bit of a robbery. I disagree a little bit there, but he was able to outgrapple. Uh, Nathaniel Wood in, in some moments there, and I think he can outgrapple Lucas Almeida here. I think that's probably what he should go to. Did the same thing to kind of uh, Bill Algio in that third round. Hopped on his back and was able to finish him there, and Bill Algio is actually a pretty good fighter as well all around. So that was a pretty impressive win there too. So I'm going to go with Andre Philly by, I don't want to say submission. Maybe I go with some, uh, Andre Philly at this point in his career. I'm, I'm just not sure. E, what's Hapology saying? Okay, they're saying decision. I'll probably go decision too. I, I don't think he has, especially Lucas Almeida, who does have, I guess, yeah, Lucas Almeida does have some good grappling ability, some decent grappling ability. I won't say good because he is getting submitted by some of these guys and taken down. I'm going to go Andre Philly. I think he just out wrestles him, out grapples him, wins on points, decisions. I think he wins this fight by decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I don't think he gets a submission over Lucas Almeida. Pat Sabatini is just a very good guy on the ground. Trains with uh, Sean Brady, Petrosky, um, Joe Pfeiffer. How do you how do you forget that name? They promote him constantly. But I'm going to go with Andre Philly in this matchup, just completely out grappling Lucas Almeida in this fight and winning by decision. Up the card, we have Tagir Ulambekov versus Cody Durden. Now, this one is a super interesting fight. Tagir Ulambekov. I don't think he has fought in a while yet. His last fight was a year ago against Nate Maness, won by submission. He has looked decent in his last fight pretty recently. Nate Maness, I guess, is all right. He hasn't looked crazy against uh, some of these fights. I think who did he, he fought? Who did he fight? He fought Tagir and Umar, right? I may be wrong here. I think he moved up weight classes a little bit. Yeah, he fought, he fought Umar, lost that one by decision, and then fought Tagir Ulambekov and lost by standing guillotine. And beat Mateus Mendoka, who is actually a decent fighter. I think he trains at Troop Box too. Not, of course, not um, not Nate Maness, but Mateus Mendonca. I'm gonna go with Cody Durden. I think he can kind of do the Tim Elliott game plan. Cody Durden has really good wrestling and some pretty decent cardio to go with it. it. It's always weird watching Cody Durden in my mind because I feel like he tires out quite a bit more than the style you'll see from like a, a Colby because Colby has insane cardio of course like but it is kind of like a similar style where there's just you're just going to keep going after you and, and looking to wrestle his cardio isn't like Colby's where you're like okay he, he, you don't think he's going to gas out you do kind of see it wear on him a little bit I think if he can force himself on Tigir Ulanbekov make it a little bit dirty of, of a fight I think he can win this one by 29-28 decision I think he kind of forces wrestling on Tagir Umbekov kind of like how Tim Elliott was able to do it make it really dirty um, cheat a little bit maybe but I am going to go Cody Durden maybe Tagir Umbekov is going to look really good in this fight he has been out for a year so you never really know he's going to have a three inch reach advantage against Cody Durden Cody Durden beat Jake Hadley in his last fight which is actually a pretty good one to have Won that one by decision beat Charles Johnson by decision pretty decent one to have there as well charles johnson made it pretty close with makaya who's a pretty good wrestler himself i know cody durden got ko'd by mc or he got knocked down with a knee by makaya and then eventually choked out but i'm gonna go cody durden by 29 28 decision maybe a split decision honestly i think it's gonna be close fight just due to to gear um grappling and we haven't seen him in a year so i still don't really know what we're gonna see from him on the feet maybe he is a slight favorite i don't mind that as odds honestly you never really know with some of these dagestani guys what they're going to look like because they do take some elongated breaks. Some of them take elongated breaks, and you never really know what they look like when they come back. So uh, Tagir Ulanbekov is a pretty decent flyweight. However, I think Cody Durden can do the Tim Elliott game plan against Tagir Ulanbekov and win the swipe by either a pretty close decision or a split decision. 34% picked by Tapology here for Cody Durden, 82% by decision. Tagir Ulanbekov, 64% by decision, 27% by submission. I don't know if he submits. Cody Durden, I don't think his grappling is maybe it is up there with Makai. I don't know. I just I just haven't seen it from Tigir Lombeko, honestly. Like he beat Al Nascimento by split decision two years ago. I guess that's a good win. 
we're not celebrating my decision. Honestly, these are actually some really good wins over some good grapplers. I, I'm, I'm going to stick with Cody Durden. I think you can do the Tim Elliott game plan. I probably said that about four times now, but I'm going to stick with Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott, I'm going to stick with Cody Durden by split decision or like a 29-28 decision. Of the card, we have Alonzo Manyfield versus Dustin Jacoby. I'm going to go with Dustin Jacoby. It seems like I can never get a pick right for Dustin Jacoby. I don't understand it either. Don Young, I, I picked him to win against Dustin Jacoby and kind of just goes out and then gets up immediately like a super weird fight. Khalil Roundtree, he really should have just won that fight. I don't know how the judges gave that to Khalil Roundtree. In all honesty, I picked... Who did I pick? I, I think I picked Dustin Jacoby against Ozma Mirzakhanov. I, I think I might have been... I think I might have picked him there because I thought Ozma was going to gas out in the, in the third round. And I was getting really frustrated with Ozma... Or not Ozma, with Dustin Jacoby in that fight because he wasn't really pushing it. The, the power, I guess, was a little bit too much from Ozma. And then I think I picked Kennedy Inzikchukwu against Dustin Jacoby, and he lost, or he, he beat Kennedy Inzikchukwu. So I, it doesn't seem like I can even get Dustin Jacoby a right pick, even though he kind of did get robbed against Khalil Roundtree. I'm going to pick him in this fight. Alonzo Manyfield is a good wrestler. However, I think Dustin Jacoby does have good take down the fence. He's really good on the feet as well. I don't think Alonzo Manyfield is going to catch Dustin Jacoby. Dustin Jacoby, a really good kickboxer himself, uh, beat Mikhail Olasechek on the feet by decision i think he was even injured in that fight i think he there's something about how he injured his leg or whatever he's pretty limited in that fight and beat mikhail sachek who's actually really good on the feet as well so alonzo manyfield after his two fights with jimmy crew won by submission in his last fight i think he can win against alonzo manyfield i don't want to say by ko i think he wins this one by decision i don't really see dustin jacoby koing many people like his last fight i guess he won against uh, Kenny Yenzikchukwu by KO and uh, Da Unyang by KO, which is actually pretty impressive. I do think he wins this one by decision. I think Alonzo Manyfield's a pretty good athlete and a pretty good fighter. I think, if anything, he's probably going to be trying to press this fight against the fence, look for the clinch, look for a lot of takedowns. I think Dustin Jacoby's going to be stuffing them and landing good shots on the feet. I don't think he finishes Alonzo Manyfield in this fight. So 70% picked by Tapology here, 44% by decision, 49% by KO, TKO. 30% Tapology is picking Alonzo Manyfield, 62% by KO, 24% by decision. Up the card, we have Casey O'Neill versus Ariana Lipsky. I'm going to take Casey O'Neill. I picked her to beat Jennifer Maya. I think I had a bad read on Jennifer Maya or something because, I mean, Casey O'Neill did not look good in that fight at all. Ariana Lipsky isn't a bad fighter. She's pretty decent on the feet, has some decent grappling as well. Just got off a win against Melissa Gatto, which is a pretty solid win to have. Won that one by split decision. BJJ Aldrich by decision. Lost to Priscilla Cachoeira by KO, which is a fighter that kind of just makes it super wild on the feet. I don't think Casey O'Neill will do that. I think she'll probably try to mix this one up on Ariana Lipsky. I think she's going to be looking to have a really good rebound. I, I think before that fight against Jennifer Meyer, UFC was kind of pushing her a little bit. She actually signed like a, was it like a seven fight contract, like a really big contract of the UFC. I, I might be wrong there. It was like five or seven. It was a pretty big contract uh, for the UFC and she did not look that great against Jennifer Meyer, who's actually a, a top fighter in that division. So she's getting Ariana Lipsky, who I don't, is she even in the rankings? I don't know if this is even a short notice fight. I haven't actually been paying attention uh, to Casey O'Neill and who she's been fighting right now. No, this is actually a fight they made. So I guess they're, they're looking more for a rebound for Casey O'Neill in this fight. I think she's just going to mix it up on Ariana Lipsky, try to uh, out technique her on the feet, look for takedowns. I think she's probably primarily going to be looking for takedowns looking to pressure and i think she'll get it i think she'll won this one probably by decision 77 percent picked by tapology 78 percent by decision 11 percent by tk okay let's move on up the card we have cody garbrandt versus brian kelleher i think i am to go with cody garbrandt brian kelleher getting up there in age 37 years of age for a bantamweight is not great to see older bantamweights i don't think are as successful as probably the younger ones i I don't know. I think that's with a lot of divisions. Let's be real. Probably outside the, the heavier ones, of course. But I think speed is a really big part of bantamweight. And I think even like the slightest disadvantage will not be helpful for you at all. And Cody Garbrandt is 32 years of age, if you can believe that. I mean, he's been in the UFC for quite a while. And man, he, he kind of went on that losing streak, lost to Pedro Munoz, beat Rafael Sunsau by that really nice KO. 
kind of just been scrappy looked what took a year off probably was i think he's gonna fight like ronnie yaya multiple times and just the fight never happens ended up fighting trevin jones who i don't think is in the ufc i think i actually saw him i think he's gonna fight on cage warriors this weekend or, or it was last weekend or something like that i saw something with trevin jones but he beat trevin jones looked a little bit more patient looked at looked a little bit more technical, picked his shots a little bit more. He was looking to get the win is basically what that was. I think he's really going to kind of open up against Brian Kelleher a little bit more here. I think he's going to be a little bit faster. 32 years of age again, the younger fighter with a one and a half inch reach advantage. Brian Kelleher was a pretty decent fighter maybe a couple of years ago. However, I think at this point, I don't see it for him at all. Cody Stamen uh, beat him by decision. We also have Ricky Simone, like the top guys are beating him. I'm pretty high on uh, Mario Batista, even though he had a pretty close fight in his last fight against uh, what's his name? I'm gonna freaking oh no, I'm I'm blanking on him. Uh, De Demond Blackshear, there you go. He had a pretty close fight with Demond Blackshear. I do think Mario Batista is probably like a top 15 guy, if not fringe top 15. Umar Nurmagomedov working his way up into the top 10, of course. Uh, Ricky Simone, I think, is in the top 10 as well. So he's lost to some pretty good elite bantamweights you could say at this point in his career however i think cody garbrandt's just gonna be a little bit faster uh, the power is gonna be the difference maker here and i do think the wrestling from cody garbrandt who is a pretty good wrestler will have the advantage as well here i think ko for cody garbrandt might be a possibility here i, I think in the first round he's kind of just gonna get going i think he's gonna really ramp it up i think this is the fight where he's gonna start to feel a little bit more comfortable because brian kelleher i don't know if he's gonna be able to finish cody garbrandt in this fight trevin jones had that power in his hands and kind of saw that in the third round of their fight i think cody garbrandt can really kind of just get super comfortable in there these are these are fights kind of just to build him up a little bit more get him a little bit more comfortable after getting kind of crazy within the last few years of his career so i'm gonna go cody garbrandt by ko in the second round i think the first round it's gonna be a little bit more calmer you'll see cody garbrandt was last fight who's gonna be picking some shots however i think he's gonna land some really good shots on brian kelleher and kind of just unleash himself on brian kelleher in the second round and i think he is gonna get the ko hopefully he doesn't fall in love with that again and just get super scrappy i think he's gonna be a little bit more technical uh, the gym uh the gym uh, what, was, what was i gonna say um, I guess it was three years ago, so I won't even bring it up, but I was going to say the gym that beat him, of course, extreme couture, Cody Stamen trains there as well. So maybe they have a decent game plan, decent read on Brian Kelleher at this point. I don't know, uh, but I am going to go Cody Yarbrandt by KO 86% picked by tapology here. 39% by decision, 52% by TKO KO. I'm going to go Cody Yarbrandt by KO in the second round. Up the card, we have Irene Aldana versus Carol Rosa. Oh, man, Irene Aldana. Good to see you again, huh? Because after I picked her against Amanda Nunes and proceeded to do absolutely nothing in that fight, it made me look like a fool. Now, I like Irene Aldana. She's a really good fighter on the feet. You don't see it too much with women's fighters, especially at women's bantamweight. On the feet, she's actually really good. Uh, she's normally a 145-pounder. I think that division's pretty much gone. I still don't, I guess they did make a title fight with uh, the 135. I think it's Myra Bueno Silva and Raquel Pennington, right? Or something like that for the title. Aldana's really good on the feet. Carol Rosa, I think is solid pretty much everywhere. I just don't think she, I just think Irene, Irene Aldana is, how do I explain this? Carol Rosa is good and solid everywhere. I won't say good. I'll, I'll say solid everywhere. She'll hang with you in the striking. She'll hang with you on the ground. She'll hang with you kind of in the clinch. You saw that kind of in the, in the uh, Norma Dumont fight a little bit more there. And Norma Dumont, I think, landed a pretty good shot on her in the later end of that fight. But Irene Aldana is just really special on the feet. She's got really good hands, especially when she lets them go. I do think, in retrospect, especially after watching the fight, I hope she believes this too. I think she really had a chance to beat Amanda Nunes. Like, let's be real. She attempted like three strikes in that first round and maybe even three strikes within the first few rounds. And one of the strikes literally caught Amanda Nunes off balance. And it was like the first strike she threw. And she was at, at that point later on in the fight, she was taking so many strikes at that point. It was like, what was the point of just not opening up early on? You had a really good chance of winning. So maybe she didn't believe in her chin. Maybe she was just kind of scared of Amanda Nunes. I don't know. Irene Aldana though is a pretty impressive fighter. I think she will get the finish here. The power in her hands are absolutely like lethal, really crazy power in her hands. Lost to Holly Holm by decision who kind of just mixed it up on her. Um, 
beat Ana Santos by KO, beat Macy Chasson by KO with the up kick. Uh, she did have a good win over Ketlin Vieira, who's kind of fallen off a little bit more. Absolutely put her out cold. Uh, but I do think she's going to get the win over Carol Rosa. Maybe not by TKO. Maybe she just hurts her a lot. I can see this being a late round TKO actually for Aldana. So I'm going to go late round TKO for Irene Aldana. I think Carol Rosa is probably going to be looking for a couple takedowns. Maybe look for the clinch. However, uh, I think Irene Aldana, who is kind of weird on the ground, uh, she does have some like weirdly decent submission ability. She actually caught Macy Chaison in a really good submission early on in her fight. I actually said freaking Irene Aldana by submission against Amanda Nunes, by the way. Uh, we're not going to talk about that one. But she does have this weird submission ability on the ground. She kind of caught Macy Chasson, who I, sh I actually think is a pretty solid fighter, a pretty good fighter on the ground in the first round, tapped her out there. Reft, I guess, didn't really see it. Happened again uh, later on in the fight with the up kick. So I think Irene Aldana is going to be able to get the finish in the late second or third round in this fight by TKO. I'm going to go with Irene Aldana by TKO. 89% picked by Tapology, 79% picked by Dis up the car we have Josh Emmett to oh gosh up the car we have Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell we are now at the fun super fun fights of the cards there are there are some pretty solid fights on the lower part of this card however it's just banger after banger after banger coming up so Josh Emmett versus Bryce Mitchell Bryce Mitchell is taking this fight on short notice Josh Emmett was supposed to fight Giga Chikadze for his retirement fight however I am going to go with Josh Emmett in this fight he does train at team alpha male so you know they got a lot of good wrestlers there so he's going to be kind of prepared for like a decent standard of wrestling you saw him kind of do i don't want to say he did decent against Ilya Teporia. Ilya Teporia hang up hanged on the feet there kind of at the end he really showed off his grappling a lot Ilya Teporia was able to take down bryce mitchell bryce mitchell was actually able to take down Ilya Teporia. if this is a like a full training camp for bryce mitchell maybe i go with him in this fight because bryce mitchell actually looked pretty decent on the feet against dan Ige, who's no slouch on the feet and it's actually pretty decent on the ground as well so i'm gonna go with josh emmett i don't like that this is a short notice fight for bryce mitchell i think josh emmett the power just might be a little bit too much for bryce mitchell i don't think he ko's bryce mitchell maybe in the third round he might but i think he hurts bryce mitchell very badly uh, the fact this is on short notice i'm kind of worried a little bit for the cardio bryce mitchell maybe goes out there and uh puts on a really good performance i know josh emmett is 38 years of age and bryce mitchell is 29 However, I think Josh M is going to be able to land really nice on Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell doesn't really move his head. And I think the takedowns aren't going to be as helpful, especially on short notice where you're not going to be able to uh, use his cardio that you'll probably see waver towards the end of this, this fight. I know it is three rounds. However, I think second round, you'll we'll kind of see it, some of the failed takedowns kind of pick up on Bryce Mitchell's cardio. And I, th and I think he will slow down a little bit. But Josh M will probably land a little bit more cleaner. I know Dan Ige landed some decent shots on Bryce Mitchell, and he's able to kind of take them. I think Josh Emmett can kind of do the same here. I'm going to go with the decision for Josh Emmett. I think he hurts Bryce Mitchell pretty badly a couple times in this fight, which I think will probably swing him the, these rounds. And I think Bryce Mitchell will kind of just put him on his back foot early on in this fight, and I don't think he's going to be able to get the takedowns on Josh Emmett that he kind of wants here. And I think the cardio might be a little bit of an issue, especially on short notice. I'm going Josh Emmett by decision. Maybe 29, 28, maybe Bryce Mitchell early on in this fight in the first round has a really good performance and uh, wins that first round and banks it. However, I think as the sweat goes on, I think Josh Emmett is going to look pretty decent. So I'm going to go with Josh Emmett by decision. 62% picked by Tapology, 64% by decision, 28%. I'm sorry, that's Mitchell. 64% <laughs> by decision, 28% by dis uh, submission, 38% for Josh Emmett, 29% by decision, 63% by TKO KO. Again, Bryce Mitchell was able to take down Ilya Teporia, which is actually pretty impressive because Ilya Teporia is really good on the ground. But I don't like that this is a short notice fight. If it was a full training camp for Bryce Mitchell, I probably would have gone with him a little bit more here. But I think Josh Emmett and the fact that Bryce Mitchell doesn't really move too much on the feet, I don't, I don't like that for him here. And I think Josh Emmett, although probably should have lost to Dan Ige a while back i think he can get this one done against bryce mitchell and with his last performance i think he's going to put a lot of it a lot of it into this fight so let's move on up the car we have vicente luque versus ian gary i did do a, like a a prediction and breakdown video of this fight like a week ago or something like that maybe it was on a, like a thursday or wednesday or whatever you can probably check that out to see my full full prediction of a, like a complete breakdown of the fight however 
I am going to go Vicente Luque. I did choose him in this fight. I think there's a lot going on for Ian Gary. And in the, in the short, you can check out the longer video if you want to see more of an in-depth breakdown of it. I'll kind of just go over it a little bit here. But Vicente Luque, not Vicente Luque, Ian Gary has a lot going on. He's blocking a lot of people. That tells me it's, it, it's kind of in his head a little bit more. I, I do think Ian Gary's a really good fighter. I don't, I don't want that to get mistaken here. Ian Gary's a really, really good fighter, has really good length, has decent movement. I, I think that is kind of under underrated. I don't is it really underrated? I think he has good length. I think he fights at good distance. He does move around quite a bit. However, I do think he is hittable at times. And that's what I noticed in his last, like if Kenan Song, I'll just say this, if Kenan Song is landing that one shot on Ian Gary and knocking him down and potentially K, like finishing him and Ian Gary has to go out there and put on a perfect performance not to get hit and KO Kenan Song, I'm a little bit worried for him against Vicente Luca. I know he probably wanted to take this fight because of some of the the sparring that he has had against Vicente Luque, and he's probably thinking, like, I'm going to put on a really good performance against Vicente Luque. However, I think there's too much going on for Ian Gary. I don't even know where he's training at. Maybe it's, like, a smaller gym or whatever. I don't like this fight for Ian Gary. Even Vicente Luque, who did have – oh, I will, well, let me get to this fight, actually. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I can't find it. But when Vicente Luque – let me open this up. When he did fight Wonder Boy – He's able to land on Wonder Boy pretty early on in that fight. He did lose it by decision. However, Wonder Boy, who's really good at maintaining distance, I, th I think even Ian Gary trained with Wonder Boy a little bit, who's really good at maintaining distance. Vicente Luque was able to kind of walk him down against the fence and land really good shots. And I think Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson probably has a better chin than Ian Gary, in my opinion. Ian Gary, what, got KO'd against Leon Edwards. I know he said it was just a head kick or whatever, or Leon Edwards said it was a head kick. And it wasn't a KO or, or anything like that. However, Layla, like like his wife, seemed to kind of hint that he got hurt very badly. He had to go to like the dentist after or whatever, so, some doctor to, to get his stuff checked after the head kick. So it was some significant damage. Got hurt very badly against Ken and Song. I think it was like Shavka that people were kind of rumoring that he did get hurt very badly, knocked out in sparring. This is a lot of damage getting getting done to Ian Gary in a pretty short amount of time periods. I don't think his chin is that great. I think Vicente Luque can, can kind of back him up against the fence, land some really good shots, some hooks, while Ian Gary circles out a little bit more, attempts some takedowns to kind of show uh, the shorten the distance that Ian Gary is going to be having on the feet and look to, to land some shots on the outside and kind of catch Ian Gary as he's circling out because Ian Gary is hittable, especially when you're able to close the distance. So I'm going to go Vicente Luque by KO in the second or third round. Up the card, we have Tony Ferguson versus Patty Pimblett. I'm going to go with Patty Pimblett. It's going to be super sad, too. I'm going to be rooting for Tony Ferguson pretty hard, but how long is the, the losing streak here? I mean, it just seems like it's getting progressively worse <laughs> every time I see it. It's a six-fight losing streak. Lost to Charles Oliveira, which isn't a bad loss to have at the time. Benil Dariush, of course, not a bad loss to have at the time. Michael Chandler had a really good moment in that first round. However, just got completely flatlined in that second round, which is pretty rough to see. But the Nate Diaz fight kind of make the excuse like it was a, it was a short notice fight. Like he's supposed to fight Li, Li Jing Liang, which thank God he didn't. Uh, but it, it was just a weird fight for Tony Ferguson. It was, a, it was originally a three-rounder, moved to a five-rounder. Didn't look the best of shape. However, he returned back to 155 against Bobby Green. Hurt Bobby Green pretty badly, and then he got hit with an eye poke, and it just seemed like it kind of just changed the whole wave of the fight. People, I don't know, maybe I was just salty at the time that it, it kind of happened to Ferguson there, but it, it felt pretty weird that he did get eye poked immediately. And the same thing with Bobby Green, where he's losing to Jared Gordon pretty early on, got headbutted. Jared Gordon kind of ended the fight there. I don't know. I was Maybe I was salty or whatever. However... Which is very unfortunate for Tony Ferguson. Patty Pimblett, uh, he beat Jerry Gordon and probably shouldn't have won the fight. However, he did get injured in that first round. I think he broke his foot. He's been out for a year. So it was a pretty serious injury. He's going to be a heavier fighter here. Tony Ferguson's grappling does not look that great. I mean, Bobby Green was able to take him down and just completely beat him up pretty badly on the ground there. So I think Patty Pimblett can kind of do the same. You've seen his grappling, especially against what Jordan Levitt. I know people will probably have this preconceived notion of Jordan Levitt on the ground. I, I know Chase Hooper just submitted Jordan Levitt. However, Patty Pimblett, the way he got him into that submission was actually pretty impressive. Pinned the arm down and was able to get the rear naked choke in. Patty Pimblett, I think, is a pretty impressive grappler. I just think Tony Ferguson at this point isn't at the, at the best 
part of his career. I'm going to be rooting pretty hard for Tony Ferguson. I really do hope he wins this fight. However, I'm going to go with Patty Pimblett by submission in like the second round. I'm going to go third round. I think Tony Ferguson actually makes this pretty competitive in the first or second round. I think he's going to be super excited after, after the first one. I think he actually banks the first round. However, I think the second and third round, it's going to be a little bit rough. I think Patty Pimblett's just going to be the younger guy. He'll be able to take a little bit more damage going to be doing a little bit better on the ground i think patty pimble is probably going to be looking to stand on the feet in the first round second and third though i think he's going to be looking to grapple so i'm going to go patty pimble by a third round submission 64 percent picked by topology 28 percent by decision 47 percent by submission 17 percent by ko tony ferguson 36 percent picked by topology 35 percent by decision 12 percent by submission 46 percent by ko so i'm going to go with patty pimble by decision i'm going to be rooting for tony though of the car, we have Shavkat Rachmanov versus Steven Wonderboy Thompson. I'm going to go with Shavkat Rachmanov. I think he does have a little bit more ways to win this fight. He does have a very unique ability of being able to get a finish. I think, what is it? He's never gone to a decision. He's been pretty even on finishes. Oh, no. He was even in his last fight. I think it was eight KOs and eight submissions. Or, yeah, eight submissions in his last fight before fighting Jeff Neal. Was able to get the submission on Jeff Neal. So, he, he's fighting these guys. He's getting finishes. He's keeping up that streak. 17 fights, 17 finishes. And I think he keeps it going on in this fight. I know he got the submission against Jeff Neal. Maybe he wants to look to even it out against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Maybe Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is going to be looking for the, the grappling of Rachmanov. Maybe he comes up and, and KOs Stephen Wonderboy Thompson at 40 years of age, 41 years of age, who did take a little bit of damage against Kevin Holland. However, I do think Rachmanov stays on the feet with them early on in this fight. Just to see where he's at, I kind of just want to. I kind of mentioned this early on in this early prediction breakdown video I made like a, a couple months ago. I, I want to see Rachmanov on the feet with Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Just, just to make this a little bit more interesting. However, I think Rachmanov does have that grappling ability. I think he probably won't go for a takedown until the end of that first round, if not the second round. I think at this point, Rachmanov probably isn't. I know, I know Wonderboy is a, a pretty impressive fighter on the feet. I just don't know how much of a risk... He's really going to beat a Rachmanov at this point of his career. I mean, I don't think Shavkat's going to be undermining like Wonderboy. I just think Rachmanov just knows he's going to be able to beat Wonderboy at any point in this fight. I, I think even if he thinks that maybe he's going to have a disadvantage on the feet, I think he still thinks in the back of his head, oh, I can go for a takedown at any point. Like Kevin Holland was hitting takedowns on, on Wonderboy. So I'm going to go Rachmanov by submission in the second round. I think after the first round, he's going to mess around a little bit on the feet. It's going to be a little bit more competitive. However, I think Rachmanov goes on the ground and just submits. See Wonder Boy Thompson pretty easily, too. I, I think he takes him down, maybe looks for an arm triangle. You never really know with Rachmanov because he got like a really interesting submission in the last fight. It was like a standing rear naked choke is what they're calling it. It was very, very unique. Um, he's just able to get the finish on some of these guys. that I didn't. I thought Jeff Neal was going to be a pretty tough competition for him, so... I'm going to go with Rachmanov in this fight by submission in the second round. Wonder Boy, very good fighter on the feet, however, has shown some problems on the ground. And I do like that he is fighting a grappler. He kind of put his money where his mouth is. He said he wanted a another chance at the title. Didn't want to face grapplers, which kind of got him some heat. He's, he's not being Dustin Poirier and actually fighting a grappler to earn his title shot, which Dustin Poirier just seems like he just doesn't want to do. So, um, congr or not congrats, props to wonder boy in this fight i'm gonna go with shavkov oh I, I think he's just he's gonna be too much for wonder boy just gonna out wrestle him out grapple him on the ground in the second round gonna play with him a little bit on the first but i think he gets the submission later on in the fight uh rock model 90 percent picked by tapology 17 percent by decision 59 percent by submission and 18 percent by ko it's interesting that 10 percent's taking him i thought it would be a little bit more vast i'll it is a He's number six in the welterweight division, so I guess not. But I'm going to go with Shavkat by second round submission. Up the card, we have Alejandro Pantoja versus Brandon Roy Val, too. I'm going to go with Pantoja. This is going to be a super fun fight. I'm just going to say that. Pantoja's style in general is definitely allows for some really, really fun fights, especially against Brandon Roy Val, who has looked really good, especially recently after coming off his KO win against Mateus Nicolau. He really kind of earned this this uh, title shot, I'm happy it's not Brandon Moreno. I thought Pantoa did beat Brandon Moreno relatively clearly. I don't know why they're calling it a robbery or anything like that. Maybe it's just Brandon Moreno's fans, but 
Um, I thought it was actually a pretty clear win for Ventoa. I think that was what the third fight too. So I'm really, really happy that that fight's not happening right now. Maybe Brandon Moreno will get it again. Actually, I think Moreno is actually fighting on um, what's his name on that Mexico card. Uh, the guy that that's rising up. Oh no. Oh, I can't forget his name. All right, this actually might take a second. Oh no, this actually might take a second. I, I, I can't forget the name. Uh, but again, Pintoja looked really impressive, shows his power. He, he does have like that weird style where he's just able to, Amir Albazi is the name, by the way. I don't know how I forgot that, but um, should be an interesting fight there. But Pantoja has a really interesting style where he's able to just walk guys down, just absolutely chat his way through an opponent's offense, just to walk them down. And then he has the grappling to kind of just go with it. Pantoja is not going to out technique you. He's not going to be super technical looking for um, something specific, like set you up with anything. He's going to walk you down. He's going to take every shot you're going to give him. He's going to show you his power. He's going to, he's going to land on you, hurt you. And then he has probably some of the best submission skills in the lower weight classes. I, I don't know who I would even com compare it to. Pantoja, I think is just really good on the ground. No one has really, um, gotten bat to bat with that in at flyweight or at least from what we've seen so i'm gonna go with pentoha by submission i think it's gonna be second round submission pentoha or not pentoha roy bell did show some issues early on against matt Schnell on that fight he did eventually finish matt Schnell because matt Schnell doesn't have the best of chins however i think pentoha is just gonna be able to walk down brandon roy, roy bell and be able to hurt him and then hop on his back and get the rear naked choke. So I'm going to go with the submission win for Alejandro Pinto on the second round. I think this is going to be a finish no matter what. I don't think Brandon Roy Val finishes uh, Alejandro Pinto. If anything, it probably goes to a decision. However, I'm relatively confident that Pinto does beat Brandon Roy Val here. I do like Brandon Roy Val as a fighter. I think he's pretty entertaining. However, I think Alejandro Pinto, uh, his, his, his style of just eating punches with the power, along with the elite grappling game, I think it's going to be a little bit too much for Brandon Royval in this fight. So I'm going to go with Alejandro Pinto, a second round submission, 88% pick by Tapology, 22% by decision, 61% by submission, and 11% by KOTKO. Of the card to our main event, we have Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington for the welterweight title, headlining the UFC 296 card. I am going to stick with Colby Covington in this fight. I believe I picked him for like an early prediction or whatever all the way back in June for like a, a July date on, in like the UK or something like that. Like this is how long this fight has kind of been in the build. It's been in the build since March when Colby Covington weighed in as the backup fighter for the Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman three fight. I'm sticking with Colby Covington because I, I do think the styles are a little bit different from him and Kamar Usman. Kamar Usman believes in his power a little bit more. Like he, he's a lot better fighter. Well, how would how would I even describe it? Mark Usman has a lot of power in his hands, which kind of makes up for some of the skill that he kind of lacks, technique that he kind of lacks a little bit on the feet. That kind of makes up for it quite a bit. And Colby Covington is more, I'm going to put my style on you. I'm going to force my way on you and try to out-wrestle you. That's Colby Covington's style. And the, and the way they wrestle is a little bit different as well. Kamar Usman at this point in his career with his bad knees, I don't even think it's necessarily that either. He has a different style of wrestling where he's going to try to uh, just out muscle you be stronger than you pick you up kind of drop you and then control you colby covington's a guy that's going to try and push a pace on you going to try and grapple going to try to work his way work his way in the clinch drop down and, and just completely just stay on you no matter what push a pace on you and i think leon edwards who's going to be on his back foot a lot it's not going to be the same as it is that it's going to be for colby covington which was with Kamar Usman, where he's kind of able to just circle around. Kamar Usman was able to kind of follow him a little bit, and Leon Edwards was able to, like, time a knee um, to when Kamar Usman looked for a takedown and kind of hit him there, or even, like, a body kick. Although, I do think the Leon Edwards body kick is going to be a big part of this fight. I think that's the way he does win if he is going to win this fight against Colby Covington. I, I think that's a way he can. However, Leon Edwards is not really known as a finisher. I'm, I'm just going to say that now. I know we got that finish over Kamar Usman. However, I will say he's more of a point fighter, like a lot of decisions on his record. He is very good on the ground. He's very good on the feet. He, he's a very balanced fighter. However, he's more of a guy that a lot of people have pointed out as like a guy that's comfortable taking a fight to the decision. He, he's looking to beat you in rounds and win the decision that way. It wasn't until like that Kamar Usman fight where he needed the head kick 
where he got the finish. So I think he's comfortable going to a decision here, and I don't think that's the best way to go with Colby Covington. I know Colby is a little bit older. He might, he, I won't say he's chinny, because he has a really, really good chin, like a very good chin. However, he has taken a lot of time off. I do think a different aspect of this fight that hasn't been looked at is I do think Colby Covington is actually switching his stance for this fight. So he, I think he's going to give Leon Edwards multiple looks for this uh, matchup because I, I think his coach came out. It's not actually being talked about quite a bit. I know it was actually on ESPN. I remember seeing it and then looking at his uh, countdown video and, and he's still fighting at Southpaw, which or was training at Southpaw. He's actually switching back to orthodox. I, I, I guess his camp, his coaches said, um, although Colby Covington is like right-handed, he would, he would fight out of Southpaw. I guess he's moving back to, to orthodox or is at least going to be moving between them. I think that's a really interesting factor here. And I think Colby Covington, who's able to push a pace on Leon Edwards is going to be really bad news for Leon Edwards. And he's training at altitude now in, in freaking Colorado. So, you know, that cardio is going to be very good for Colby Covington in this fight. I think you kind of saw what happened. I know this fight isn't at altitude. You kind of saw what happened with Leon Edwards at altitude against Kamar Usman. And Kamar Usman doesn't really have that style. It's just going to outwork you and tire you out and kind of just completely overload you. Colby Covington has that style. It is going to be in Vegas, but I think Colby Covington can definitely push a pace on Leon Edwards. I don't think he gets a submission. or I think he just outworks Leon Edwards for a decision. I think it's actually going to be pretty close. I think early on, Leon Edwards is going to be pretty successful on the feet. They're going to be able to stuff some of the takedowns, I think, in the first or second round. Like, you saw that against Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal was able to stuff, like, a couple of those initial takedowns. But as it just adds up and adds up, Colby Covington just wears on these guys. And I think it's just going to be a little bit too much for Leon Edwards in this fight. I think Leon will probably win the first couple rounds. Maybe he hurts Colby Covington in that first round. But I think Colby Covington just pushes a pace, moves between stances, kind of makes Leon Edwards kind of guess a little bit more because... We haven't seen Colby Covington in orthodox for a very long time. Maybe he does look a little bit better on the feet. Who knows what? Maybe he actually looks worse. Who knows? But um, I think he's going to be giving Leon Edwards multiple looks, going to be looking for takedowns. He can move the takedowns from the clinch, so you never really know if he's going to be there for a knee or anything like that. Leon Edwards also changes stances, and working off the back foot is going to be a lot harder for Leon Edwards in this fight. I know he was kind of circling, landed the knee, landed the body kick against Kamar Usman, who's more of like going to walk you down. Colby Covington is going to push. And I think Colby Covington pushing against Leon Edwards, making Leon Edwards work off his back foot is not going to be good for Leon Edwards in this fight. So I'm going to go Colby Covington by decision. I think the pace is going to be a little bit too much. Although this is an older Colby Covington at 35, it's not that much older it is welterweight. I know there's like some statistic where like guys who are like 35 or whatever are three and 30 in title fights or, or something like that, or at least in, in divisions welterweight and under i'm gonna go with colby covington so i think that the pressure is gonna be a little bit too much for leon edwards on this fight so let me know who you guys think wins this fight down below in the comments and i'll see you guys next time